I now hand the conference over to Mr. Gavin Disa from CDR India. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Aman. Good day, everyone, and a warm welcome to Expo Industries Q2 and H1 FY21 on the Analyst and Investor Conference Call. We have with us today Mr. Arvind Singhania, the Chairman, and Mr. Pradeep Kumar Astagi, the Chief Financial Officer. We will begin this call with opening remarks from the management, following which we will have the floor open for an interactive Q&A session. Before we begin, I would like to point out that some stations, statements made in today's discussions may be forward-looking in nature, and a note of this effect has been sent to you in, in part of the invite area. I would now like to invite Mr. Singhania to make his opening remarks. Over to you. Sir. Thanks, Kevin, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I have alongside me Mr. Pradeep Prasadi, our CFO. I hope all of you are safe and healthy. I will begin the call with key highlights from each of our businesses, following which Pradeep will walk you through our financial performance for the quarter and first half. To begin with, I am pleased to report that we continue to build on our business momentum. Revenue and profitability both grew at a healthy clip during Q2 on the back of stellar performance of the film and engineering plastics businesses. Let me now talk about the individual businesses, starting with specialty polymers. While performance during the current year is likely to be subdued primarily because of COVID-19 related restrictions in customer markets, the business fundamentals remain structurally sound and we expect strong recovery from next year onwards. Business momentum is slowly picking up steam following challenging Q1, which was disrupted by COVID-19. But for COVID-19, performance of specialty polymers at DU would have been much better than FY20. We are very encouraged with the introduction of three new products, namely LMC03, uh, Low Melt, uh, it's Cationic Diable Master Batch MB16, and the Deep Diable Master Batch MB07 in recent weeks, and expect these products to contribute substantially going forward. Commercial sales have already started on a small scale. These products find application in textile slash carpet industry and are expected to contribute significant volume starting very soon. We are already witnessing revival in demand for MB03. Demand for innovative PBT continues to remain strong. We have already achieved in the first half sales of 535 metric tons as compared to sales of 465 metric tons during FY20. Innovative PBT finds applications mainly in consumer electronics currently and is now being propagated for other applications such as automotive, textiles, cosmetics, etc. The fundamentals of the specialty polymer business are strong. We expect sales revenue upwards of rupees 150 crores with EBIT margins in excess of 40% in FY22. Given that specialty polymers is an IP technology driven business and secondly, it is largely patented protected, patent protected, which acts as a very strong entry barrier. Moving on to our film business. <coughs> film business continued its recent momentum on the back of strong demand from the end user industry. COVID-19 pandemic appears to have had positive effects on the film business with a growing number of customers preferring more packaged products for health, hygiene, and safety reasons. Stronger demand resulted into improvement in sales, volumes, and capacity utilization. Domestic demand has been growing at a healthy clip of 11 to 13% annually in recent years, which has translated to steady margins. Additional capacity created on account of commissioning of two new lines in FY20 were absorbed with minimal disruptions, as I had already mentioned in my last call. We are also working towards improving our product mix uh, by close to doubling the share of value-added products to 30% by end of FY22 from 16% at present. Commissioning of the offline quota during the previous quarter was a step in this direction. Higher proportion of value accretive products will enable us to improve margins and profitability of the film SBU. We expect the demand momentum to continue over the years to come, and in line with this, we have started setting up a new film manufacturing unit through the wholly owned subsidiary in the state of Telangana to help meet growing demand of domestic and international customers. As informed in earlier calls, the project will be judicially funded through a mix of debt and equity. We are in advanced stages of tying up funds, both foreign currency and rupee term loans for the project. The overall cost of debt for this project is expected to be about 6% per annum. We are targeting to complete this project by June 2022. The commissioning of the new line will provide a further leg up to the business and help drive revenue growth. As far as the plastics business is concerned, COVID-19 adversely impacted the performance during Q1 FY21. However, the revival has been sooner and stronger than I expected, demonstrated by substantial improvement in volume of sales and margin in Q2 FY21. In fact, Q2 FY21 has been the best quarter 
both in terms of value, uh, volume and margin in the history of the SBU. Like film business, we are working towards improving the product mix for this business. We are confident of such a of a much better performance of engineering plastics as view going forward. To conclude, I would like to state that we remain confident about prospects. We see significant headroom for growth across all our businesses. While film and specialty polymer business are structurally well placed with strong demand visibility, engineering plastics business would start delivering steady performance and contributing meaningfully to the overall growth of the company going forward. Volume of take for most of the products under specialty polymer business is improving. We expect the business to deliver good growth over the coming years following pickup and demand for established and emerging products. Film business as well is expected to perform well based strong double digit growth and demand. Further, our efforts towards improving the product mix <coughs> as well will have positive effect on the performance of film business. That concludes my opening remarks and I hand over the floor to Prateen to walk you through our financial performance. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'll quickly walk you through our performance for the quarter and first half, post which we can begin the Q&A session. Starting with the quarter, revenues from operations stood relatively stable on year-on-year -year basis at Rs. 251 crores as against Rs. 254 crores generated during corresponding quarter last year. However, one needs to consider Q2 FY20 included revenues were Rs. 16 crores from sale of chips as against zero revenues during the current quarter. Adjusted for that, we would have delivered growth on a year-on-year -year basis. <coughs> for the first six months, revenues stood at Rs. 439 crores as against 538 crores reported during H1 FY20, lower by 19%, primarily owing to COVID-19-led challenges which impacted revenue during Q1. EBITDA for the quarter stood at Rs. 73 crores as against Rs. 46 crores generated during Q2 FY20, higher by 58% on the back of better margins in film business and significantly improved performance from meaning plastic business. For H1, the same stood at Rs. 126 crores as against Rs. 100 crores garnered during H1 FY20, higher by 26%. Finance cost for the quarter stood at Rs. 4 crores as against Rs. 7 crore outgo reported during Q2 FY20, lower, lower by 43%. On a half yearly basis as well, the same declined by 43% to Rs. 8 crores as against Rs. 14 crore. As of September 30th, 2020, our outstanding interest-bearing term debt, net of free, free cash, stood at Rs. 65 crore, while interest-bearing working capital liabilities stood at Rs. 32 crore. Interest bearing debt net of free cash as a multiple of annualized EBITDA stood at a healthy level of 0.39 as of 30th September 20 in comparison to 0.8x as at 30th September 19 and 0.47x as at 30th June 2020. As mentioned by Mr. Singhani earlier, we are committed towards maintaining better than prudent debt tangible net worth ratio. Investment as equity into the wholly owned subsidy will not materially alter our gearing ratio. The overall cost of debt for this new project would be about 6% per annum as we plan to take advantage of low cost euro denominated foreign currency loan. Depreciation for the quarter stood at Rs 9 crores on a half yearly basis. The same stood at Rs 17 crores. Profit for the quarter stood at Rs 46 crores as against 19 crores generated during Q2 FY20, higher by 139%. While on a half yearly basis, the same stood at Rs 75 crore against Rs 43 crore reported during H1 FY20, higher by 74%. To conclude, I would just like to reiterate that our business momentum is now picking up steam across all, all the verticals. Film business continues to benefit from favorable demand supply dynamics and strong demand growth. Especially polymer business as well as showing increasing signs with steady demand for most of our products. Volume for MD03 as well has started to pick up gradually. We continue to remain positive on the business and expect significant growth in the coming years. Growing improvement is and is expected to perform well going forward. Thank you. So should we open the floor for Q&A? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. 
Anyone who wish to ask a question at this time, they may please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Rahul Natkani from SR Industries. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I'm actually just to correct. I'm an Indian. Uh, There's a lot of background noise from your side. We can't hear you. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah. So uh, my question was uh, just to correct. I'm an individual investor and not from SR Industries. Just to clarify. Uh, my questions are uh, in terms of uh, first question is relating to the. Uh, Films business, poly, uh, uh, polyester films business. So in this, uh, in the investor presentation, you have mentioned that uh, the polyester film chips uh, revenue has been zero for this quarter. So is it like this business has been totally discontinued? No, it has not been discontinued. It has only been discontinued for a short while. In any case, this was just to fill up capacity. It's not. It doesn't deliver us very high margins. It just, uh, you know, we have spare capacity in in chips, so we sell it uh, and we make a couple of bucks. Uh, so. It's it's not really a it's not really a, a very meaningful bottom line provider. Okay, so it's just about the whichever spare capacity minus spare capacity that remains, you utilize it for that purpose. Correct. Okay. Uh, ne my next question is in relation to the new entity that you have formed and the new project that you're coming up with. I understand there is an increase in the project cost uh, by around uh, 87 odd crores. So uh, in that, I wanted to understand there were two figures which were. Uh, uh, appearing in terms of as on September there was an amount of around 28 crores and as on uh, 26 October there was a figure of 75 crores. So I just wanted to understand is this completely equity or this is the to this is the investment which is made? Okay, so this uh, this is the equity which has been uh, given by SR Industries into the wholly owned subsidiary and there has been an increase in the uh, project cost which was earlier estimated at 500 crores is now about 585 crores. This is largely on uh, uh, two accounts. Uh, number one, uh, that we have increased the land area that we have taken and uh, a better location has been chosen. So the price of land per acre has, uh, is higher and we will, be, uh, we will be able to accommodate more number of lines going forward. So this, this has increased the investment, number one. Number two, uh, there, has been a, there is, will be an upfront payment for the uh, Euro loan that we are taking of about 15 crores, uh, which is built into the all-in cost of 2%. So that that amount was uh, added on of 15.8 crores, and then the third is uh, because of the uh, uh, of the depreciation of the rupee versus the euro, and some more uh, equipment which was uh, underestimated has been added on. The project cost is now frozen at 585 and will will not undergo any further increases. Okay. So in terms of out of that 585, what would be the debt quantum and how much of it is tied up as of now? Okay, so the uh, equity uh, from will be at 175 crores. The equity will be 175 crores, and about uh, uh, 400 uh, crores will be the debt in the wholly owned subsidiary. Okay, and uh, and the 75 which is done uh, till 26th of October is entirely equity. No debt drawdown has been made till date. No, in the wholly owned subsidiary, no debt has been taken. No debt has been taken. Okay. Uh, and then the next question is on engineering plastic revision. There has been a significant improvement in terms of, uh, if I look at on a quarter and quarter basis in terms of this business, uh, which was a regard for the company as a whole. So what exactly has changed? If you can throw some light on uh, this uh, business. Well, two things happened. Number one, uh, there was a lot of pent up demand uh, because Q1 was, was horrible for this uh, SBU. And uh, so volumes were substantial. Uh, we were geared up to, uh, to take care of this volume. That was point number one. We also took advantage of very cheap raw materials which are available in Q1 uh, because you know prices across the globe had fallen for all materials. And we took advantage and we bought very cheap raw materials which gave, which gave, a, which, which gave us a lot of success uh, for the LPU. And auto and electrical segments have, have, have picked up tremendously. Okay, and just to understand uh, in terms of uh, if the investment in the wholly owned subsidiary was around 28 crores uh, as on September and on 26, so within 26 days we made an incremental investment of 50 crores. Did we have that sort of a cash on our books as on 30 September? Yeah. <laughs> How else will we make the payment if we don't have the cash? We had and the... Uh, yeah. Hello? Hello? 
ఈక్వేషన్ So can you give us a sense as you think about the next one or two years of how you see his revenue growth at a consolidated level for the company? Well, uh, let me put it this way that first of all, the, the, the margin improvement has come uh, because of the margin improvement in film largely right now. And in, of course, in Q2, engineering plastics has contributed as well. Uh, going forward, uh, by let, let me give you a number that by uh, FY23, at exit of fy23 will be at a run rate of about 2000 crores per year right okay so uh, one can back work the numbers in terms of annual growth rates but you can see double digit consolidation hello yeah are you thinking double digit growth rates then in general over the period well we are, we are at about 1000 crores right now and uh, for uh, let's say fy24 full year will be will be will be at about 2000 crores okay uh, excellent so will double will double will double our turnover in four years time new film plant will be commissioned in june of 22 that will also add to the revenue understood a second question mr sardi for you uh, when i look at the margins uh, 29% in q2 of fy21 versus 18% in the same quarter last year of the 11% bump up in margins how much of that has come from mix change towards specialty polymers uh, raw material benefit due to crude or thirdly any other cut in operational expenses can you give us a sense of the break up in these three buckets the, the, the improvement in margin is only on uh, account of uh, uh, the margin improvement in film business because as we have been telling uh, uh, in the past the in film the, the we uh, there is a pass through model the any movement in the raw material price is passed on to the customer so the demand and supply situation determines the margin so the the any movement, the uh, the uh, improvement in the result is on account of uh, improvement in margins only understood so if i understand you correctly it's not on account of rm because that's a delayed pass through but it's largely uh, operating leverage and mix it is a leverage coming out of the demand supply because we were running our film plant at almost 100% capacity so there is no not much room for increasing the production so it is uh, the demand and supply since the film has improved and that is what is uh, showing the results the margins in films have improved yes yes and is that because of operating leverage again or what has changed there no demand supply yeah so essentially you had uh, greater greater demand for your products and consequently for the same level of operations you have a greater supply we don't we are restricted with supply we don't have capacity we are running at yes, running at full capacity right so then how do you see improvement in margins if you are already running at full capacity the prices have gone up the the, the so the the the, the 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 difference between selling price and raw material has has increased the value additions have increased so value addition has increased on account of mix uh, etc okay understood thank you very much thank you The next question is from the line of Himesh Sadra from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity. So my question is, what is the revenue potential that we are looking from the new facility that will come in from June 2022? Engineering plastics? Yes. The expansion is in film business. The expansion is in film business. No, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, correct. I mean, uh, from the film, uh, the new facility that we are starting from June 2022 in the yeah. film business. So what is the revenue potential that you are looking for? About 500 crores at full capacity utilization. At full capacity. Okay. And uh, so uh, this MB16 also, have we, 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 were, we were on our way to receive few commercial orders. So have we received any commercial orders for MB16? Yes. Yes. 
It's already done. So this was the old MB06 which used to report in our presentation. This has now been renamed as MB16. So any, any, any yeah, amount so that we will work on? So we've already received our first order. It has been mm -hmm. executed. It is being run by the customer. The first dry, uh, trial has been very successful. They are now running a, a larger 18 ton uh, uh, and this material is expected to be approved. And once it is approved, we will start doing larger volumes immediately. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of NM Modi from as an digital investor. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Sir, my query is regarding investment which we are going to make into subsidiary. So the uh, the amount of loan which we will we will be providing to them, we, will we be charging any interest on that company? We are not providing any loan to the subsidiary. It's all going as equity. Oh, by way of equity only. Yeah. So they so will make loan, loan in their books. Loan component, they will be uh, arranging themselves. The, that yeah, company yeah, will yeah. be arranging themselves. Absolutely. Right, right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arnav Kapoor. As an individual investor, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Singhania. Thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a great quarter. Uh, I had a couple of questions. One is on the SP business. Uh, there seems yeah. to be a decrease in the margin. You know, guidance had been approximately 35% blended. Uh, would you say that are we trying to sell more at the expense of margin? Or do you feel for the net year we'll be at, you know, 30-35%? from a margin perspective. No. So basically, the margins in SP business in terms of uh, per kilo has not changed at all. It's only that our volumes have fallen because of COVID. Once the volumes come back, the margins will go back up to the same number that we have fixed. Because fixed costs remain fixed. Got it, got it. Okay, that's very helpful. And uh, from the engineering plastic, uh, you know, division, uh, I think this question also came in uh, earlier. There's been a margin improvement, and you also mentioned in your opening commentary that it's been the best quarter. Uh, what's been the current capacity utilization, and do you think can it sustain? And I think you also mentioned that you're looking at expansion. Uh, you know, what is the overall driving for this bullishness that you have on the EP business uh, going forward? You see, uh, 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 the auto and the elect uh, electrical segment have shown a tremendous uh, uh, rebound in Q2. Uh, we expect this momentum to be maintained going forward. And uh, we are also looking at investment because we are looking at relocation of the plant, which will help us in serving the customers better and reduce our costs substantially. Because there's a lot of logistics costs involved because of our current location. Bringing in raw materials from the port, all the way up north and then distributing it all over India. So we are looking at an investment to relocate the facility with a new extruder, uh, additional new extruder to take care of a growing demand. And it is fully justified uh, because the relocation itself will increase uh, EBITDA margins by about 3%. And the current capacity utilization is about more than 70%. Okay, got it. So it's, uh, you know, capacity utilization plus the, the cost, uh, you know, optimization that you're looking for. Uh, and the so investment in the engineering plastic business is not very large. It's very, very small. So including relocation, including relocation and a new extruder, the total cost would be under, under 20 crores. Okay, okay. And the savings and, uh, will more than justify this. Got it. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So, and this, uh, you know, two last questions, if I have the, op you know, uh, opportunity to ask. The Boppet spread, you'll expect, you know, the spread you uh, expect them to maintain, you know, between 50 and 60 throughout this year and also going forward. Do you expect that to fall or any increase in that or expect I, that to sustain? I think it will sustain uh, for the next 18 to 24 months at least. Okay, and just one final question, given the second wave of COVID and, you know, in at least in the Northern Hemisphere that we're seeing, do you expect, uh, you know, that to impact your SP business, at least given that it's coming from the U.S. entirely, the, the revenue in 2020 was about 73 crores, we expect 75 CR still to happen in this year, uh, you know, barring the second wave, if that comes through or not in the U.S. at least. So basically, in the specialty polymer business, only one product got impacted, which was the MB03. 
uh, we've already seen revival of that business uh, uh, starting to happen and uh, we expect this to continue uh, that kind of lockdown what we saw uh, and the panic that was created in the first quarter we don't expect that whatever be the covid situation i don't expect business uh, businesses to shut down and be under lockdown the way it happened in q1 because no no world econ uh, no no country in the world can afford closures anymore business has to run as usual and plus the expectation of the vaccine coming is going to ensure that uh, you know business returns to normal faster so we don't expect any negative impact from covid anymore and in any case as far as the uh, SP, like i said sp business was only impacted on the mb03 no other product thank you sir no request to join the question queue for any follow up as we have several participants waiting for their turn thank you the next question is from the line of faisal zubair hawa from ag hawaiian company please go ahead uh hello yeah please can go ahead yeah can you pass the question please to another one all right thank you the next question is from the line of ajay borke from prabhudas lilathar please go ahead um good afternoon sir uh yeah uh so you mentioned uh, in uh, your interaction on cnbc uh, that the spreads in july which had gone up to 75 levels and subsequently come down to 50 levels uh, what is your uh, estimate about the spreads going forward in film business for the next 6 uh, months that's the first question uh, secondly in specialty polymers uh, for fy22 you given a guidance of 150 crores and a margin of 40% uh what kind of uh, revenues are we looking at in fy21 for specialty polymers and what kind of margins for the full year one should be in and lastly if you could just dwell on the demand supply dynamics in the film business have any new lines come up since the start of the financial year you know uh, can we go can i ask you question by question because you know four certainly, questions sir, certainly sir. yes sir certainly 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 so i have mentioned that the spread in film will remain between 50 to 60 going forward for for the short to medium term and i maintain that okay sir then so specialty polymers what kind of revenue should one be in for fy21 and margins fy21 should be about the same as last year 70 crores maybe 60 to 70 crores it will 70 largely hit because of mb03 okay sir Uh, so and uh, because mp303 mainly goes in the restaurant business whether the carpets are used or film uh, multiplexes commercial, commercial commercial carpet application commercial carpet okay so you expect that business to come back in the second half in america and in west it has already started coming back earlier than we expected and it will uh, so we we have lost half the year and therefore uh, you know we have we have had a substantial loss on that business in this current year if this hadn't happened if covid hadn't happened we would have been in excess of 120 crores in the sp business in fy21 okay so thank you but so and uh, about will, the demand supply dynamics rebound, in the this industry will, this will rebound this will rebound and i have given a, a clear guidance that fy22 we expect our uh, turnover to be in upwards of 150 crores with margins of 40% yes sir Uh, so and lastly on the um, the demand supply dynamics in the film business have, have any new capacities come up sir in the start of the financial year no, in the industry no. no new capacity has come up in uh, in, in current year uh, in the uh, current uh, calendar year of 2020 and the next capacity expected to start up is around september october of 21 okay and how much would that be sir capacity 40000 tons approximately two lines and there's a second line i am not sure because they've all been delayed because of covid Okay okay sir. Uh so thank you very much uh thank you very much sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sonal Kohli from Bohet. Please go ahead. Hey congratulations on your numbers. I have couple of questions. Firstly, you know on your packaging business, you know how is the journey demand doing and you know uh, considering new cases will take a while to come you said September 2021. Uh, how would you service your growing demand in india i guess the demand is going at 13% so can we export as a industry and company in particular and you know um, would you do to export again once you know uh, new capacities in the industry coming in 
Yes, so you are absolutely right. Uh, there will be a change in dynamics between the domestic and export. Uh, and once the new capacity starts coming, we can always increase exports again. Zari demand is and back sir, to full almost. And sir, where are currency margins higher? And due to the recent COVID cases, like we saw in July and August, do you expect restocking in Europe to increase for packaging products? Or this time the prepared, so we may not see that kind of situation. Uh, with the revised, I think whatever the COVID scenario, uh, we expect that the stocking situation will again uh, take the previous shape what, what we experienced in the uh, first quarter. So you expect stocking could go up in Europe, uh, you know, because of this? Yeah, because the originally stocking was done to at least continuity on essential goods supply. So things normalized and then they, the stocking, stock levels were reduced. And with the second wave coming in, of course, the scenario has to come back again. As far as your product mix in packaging is concerned in terms of value added and non-value added products, can you give some idea incrementally, let's say, you know, going forward, how much more EBITDA or revenue you could make because of, you know, this business, let's say, in 2021 and 2022, as compared to your normal, you know, uh, non-value uh, added business and how this mix could change over the years, let's say, you know, 2021, 22, 23, as compared to FI20, a very broad direction. So I said that, uh, you know, the uh, the, the value-added business uh, will give you additional margins of about uh, anything between 50, let's say on an average 60 rupees over and above plain sale. So if you, if you, if you do 4,000 tons per year more, it will give you about uh, uh, 24 crores. And sir, is this what you are, and when would you expect this uh, 40,000, you know, uh, on a quarterly run rate basis, at least, uh, you know, 10,000 kind of number uh, to start, you know, uh, 10,000, I'm sorry, your years. numbers are wrong. Uh, 30%. 30%. So we, we are already at about 16, we are already at about 16%. 17%. By March, we'll reach about 25-26%. Exit rate. So, so, sir, what I was trying to understand in terms of incremental volume, like you said, 40,000, is that the incremental volume we're talking about? And 40, you know, 000, uh, 40, 000, not 40,000. We've said 4,000, sir. Sorry, 4,000. So uh, what I am trying to understand, let's say your profitability packaging business was, let's say, 100 rupees in the preceding quarter, you know, which has gone by. Uh, when do you think because of your, you know, uh, what could be the profits, let's say, 12 months down the line, just because of change in product mix? That's what I'm trying to gauge right now. And what I could be you, a medium term direction? I'm giving, you, I'm giving you exact number that it will be approximately 25 crores more because of this particular uh, quoted business. Over the next one month? Have I Over the next. Once we reach full capacity utilization, which we expect to reach by March. Lovely. And sir, as far as your specialty polymer is concerned, do you expect a Q4 to be a bigger quarter than Q3? And how do you expect the mix uh, between existing and new products uh, for 2022? I guess you've got some new patent as well, you know, uh, and uh, would you, you know, be seeing a guidance from your side for the FI23 sector, you know? So how are you building those estimates and what gives you confidence? Are these, you know, have, is it like, you know, you're adding new customers or are you meeting only small part of the demand of existing customers and you have some kind of visibility from them that, you know, uh, you know, uh, they would increase the offtake from you, or is it you're betting on success of new products, or is it a mix of all of these? We're just trying to understand because it's a very high growth rate, you know, and uh, trying to understand the probability of, you know, success in that business uh, and the various moving parts. So, uh, so an elaborate answer on, you know, uh, what gives you that kind of confidence for a 300-400% growth rate will be very helpful. It's very clear. It's a mix of all three. Number one, we uh, we expect our MB03 to come back next year, substantially. Number two, the three new products that we have introduced, 
uh, uh, going to start giving us volumes if we begin. And number three, we have got uh, uh, we expect the innovative PBT to increase uh, volume substantially next year, and this is all based on clear guidance by the customers. Uh, so innovative PBT, we already have done 535 tons in first half as compared to 465 tons last year, against a contracted volume of 400 tons per year. So this year we expect to cross 800 tons, and next year this will be in the region of 12 to 1500 tons. So new product, MB, revival of MB03 and IQPB, uh, innovative, PBT. innovative PBT. And sir, as far as your this business is concerned, you know, uh, would we reach saturation of the markets in, you know, FI23, FI24, or how big is the pie? How conservative or aggressive are your assumptions in context of this IQPB pie and the number of customers you are still have to tap? Or your existing customers, you know, let's say if they do 100 volumes, what are you catering to them currently in for those kind of products? Like, okay. are you so, expecting 100? Okay, let me answer that. 100? So now, let me, let me, I've understood your question. Let me answer that very quickly. Uh, here we are creating the pie. There is no pie to, to take a slice from. We are developing new products and creating a new pie to eat. Okay. So, you know, uh, uh, as per the current visibility, we are very confident, as we have mentioned, uh, we are uh, very confident of doing upwards of 150 crores in FI, FI22. And uh, by 20, FI24 or 25, we will be at about 400 crores uh, revenue with 40% plus EBIT, EBIT, EBIT margins. So, sir, as far as the existing products are concerned, uh, have you, uh, you know, uh, I'm not talking about the new products, uh, you know, the market which they cater to, uh, have you taken, I mean, you know, uh, their scratch only a part of the small part of the pie? Or, you know, uh, just I'm trying to get an idea it's about not the a small part. I, again and again, I keep telling you this is a patented product. Nobody else can supply this product. We have 100% share. We have 100% share. So, sir, okay, let me rephrase my question. I understand it's a patent product and that's why it's a time margin. What I'm trying to understand is, Let's say the end usage industry where your products are introduced, what kind of penetration have you achieved in those products and how big the potential pie, let's say, over a five-year period could be for your existing products. So let's say you cater to a particular industry uh, because we are a new product. Obviously, it takes time for the usage to increase. So what is the level of the, you know, the... Uh, it's a very long, long answer. If I have to go industry. product by product, so now it, it's a very long your answer. Your key one to products. Your key one to products. That's it. Existing products. Okay. MB03, MB03, we are, uh, we are, target, we are uh, estimating to sell about 1,700 tons by uh, 50. We should do about 14 to 1,500 tons next year, 1,700 tons in FI23. And it, it could have a potential of going up to 3,000 tons per year. But I'm not factoring that in. That is not factored in. I'm only stopping at 1,700 tons. Sell set 400? On, on IQPBT, it's going to continue to grow year on year. So we are, we, the, last year we did 450. This year we expect to cross 800. Next year we expect to do about 13, uh, 14, 1,500. And this will keep growing uh, incrementally every year and could reach four 5,000 tons in the next few years. Mm. Then, um, uh, then as far as MB16 is concerned, we are talking with one customer for 3,000 tons per year. This could grow to 6, 7,000. But I'm not factoring 6, 7,000. I'm only factoring 3,000 tons, but I've got clear guidance from one customer. On the MB07, I have clear-cut guidance of 1,000 tons from one customer. We are in talks with another customer for similar volumes. So, you know, each, and there are various other, uh, and, and then LNC03, which is our uh, hot melt adhesive, uh, we are, we are uh, factoring only about 5 6,000 tons by 24, 25. This has a potential to go up to 40, 50,000 tons if, if, it, if it's a super hit in the market. Thank you, Mr. Kohli. The question to join the question queue for any follow-up. The next question is from the line of Faisal Zubair Hawa from AG Hawaiian Company. Please go ahead. Hello, Faisal. So I think this is a disturbance from his line. We'll move to the next question. That is from the line of Shailendra Agarwal from Agraya Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, Mr. Singhavia. Congratulations for a good set of... So Shailendra, your audio is breaking, so I request you to speak a bit loud, please. No, it is still breaking. 
but sir going for the next half also sir the type the type of the quality of numbers we have which now we are uh, now we are getting quarter on quarter sir how confident are you that h for the h2 also this uh, at least this trend can continue mane the numbers which we have posted for uh, q2 won't be uh, won't be a, just a, a lucky luckily number have come up because of uh, xyz reason but it is on a sustainable basis we can report numbers of this uh uh mane uh, 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 absolute number going forward also sir let me put it this way that uh, largely we hope and expect that half two will be similar to half one thank you mr kapoor request to join the question queue for any follow up the next question is from the line of mohammad patel from blue banyan advisor please go ahead good afternoon sir uh, what is the peak sales that can we can do on the engineering plastic side Uh, we can do about uh, on a annualized basis we can do about uh, 14000 15000 tons in terms of revenue value value and you can tell me it could be about uh, uh, about 220 crores okay. 220 to 230 crores okay okay and what is the peak sales that can we do on the specialty polymer segment roughly there is no there is no limit to that no no on the current capacity we have to build the market as we keep building the market we'll keep selling okay okay understand understand and you say that 3% margin increase after that relocation so is this based on q2 margins or is it uh, on the normal margin there is nothing to do relocation is a cost saving it has nothing to do with current margin no, no, no. okay no no you said there will be 3% saving in the margin We will increase the margin by three percent. Increase the margin. the margin by relocation. We save cost. That's how the margin will increase. Understood. So this increase will be on the average EBITDA margin that we have done historically, or on the Q2 base. So it's a it's a cost reduction. Okay. <laughs> Understood. Okay. Thank you. My question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Surendra as an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. This congratulations for very stellar performance of this share industry. Thank you. Sir, sir, my question is about that. Just now you told that uh, you are relocating that engineering plastic business. This will be happen in FY21 or in FY22. it will happen in fy22 fy22 some one more question is our film business right now we are running at 100% capacity reduction is there an opportunity for outsourcing the film sorry say again is there any outsourcing opportunity for extra industries to source the film and then market no 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 question okay but uh, one more One more question about the, uh, that uh, that ma this special this special uh, this our special uh, business is that you are saying that your that uh, our 150 crore turnover will be in FY22. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anirudh Thakre as a shareholder. Please go ahead. Yeah, I just want, hi sir. I just want to understand. Like uh, looking at this new, are you looking for any new product development uh, for this vaccination or a for any opportunity in this COVID-related market? No, I'm not. I'm not in the pharma business. So, so even packaging, no, no, no. Okay. I mean, thank you. Come. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ajay Borke from Prabodhas Nilathar. Please go ahead. Uh, so, what were the exports uh, for the current quarter, and uh, how do you see the trajectory in the medium term for exports in uh, various divisions? Thank you very much, sir. Okay, uh, specialty polymer is all exports. There is nothing in domestic. Thirty percent, thirty, thirty, about thirty percent. About thirty percent of the volume in film will be exported. 
and in in the uh, and in the engineering plastics business, it'll be a very marginal number of exports, maybe five to ten percent. Five to ten percent. And then are the realizations in exports uh, on par with the domestic realizations, or are they better? In, in, or in specialty polymer, everything is exports, so there is no comparative. No, no, I'm talking about the film business, sir. Yes, it's comparative. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is follow-up question from the line of Rahul Nadkarni. As an industry investor, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, please. You can. Yeah. So uh, my question was in specialty polymer business. So in, we have an innovative PBT contract, right, for 400 tons uh, from uh, chemical global chemical player. So uh, that is supposed to be renewed uh, in some time. So are there any talks in terms of uh, what is the quantum? Do we see any increase in quantum in terms of renewal, or when will we get a confirmation on the renewal? I've already I've already mentioned that you know we've already got a uh, we've already got a indication for increase in volumes to about twelve to fifteen hundred tons next year. So contract renewal is only a formality. Okay, so we have a commitment on uh, uh, at least uh, contract might follow, but around twelve hundred tons is the number. Yeah, twelve to fifteen hundred tons for next year. Okay. Uh, that was first question. My next question is in terms of the uh, the euro loan which you are planning to take. Uh, one, what is the quantum of that loan? Is the entire debt would be foreign denominated euro loan, uh, or do we have a domestic component as well? So there would be rupee term loan also. The rupee term loan would be about 160 crores. Foreign currency loan in rupee terms would be about 250 crores. And 175 crore would uh, be the equity investment from extra industry. So that's okay. how the 585 crore will be funded. Okay. And uh, in terms of the 250 crores, uh, will uh, is it com would it be completely held, or you will have uh, natural hedge by way of your exports? We have a natural hedge by way of exports. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Ainar from ITI Longshot Fund. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, thanks, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question was on, you know, the polyester film business, uh, which is uh, uh, basically, you know, it's a global commodity. And in India also, we have uh, SRF and, you know, few other players. Now, uh, uh, you know, what makes you so confident that, you know, the uh, margins would sustain? Now, why am I asking this question is, you know, again, there can be uh, the pricing is global for these kind of products. So globally, anywhere if the capacities are coming up, that can put pressure. Uh, another thing is, you know, uh, a company like you know, SRS, uh, they have been saying that they expect the margins uh, to become softer because of, you know, with uh, global capacity additions, which uh, they might be more aware of, uh, obviously. So, uh, you know, that's been uh, one of the things they have been uh, sort of, you know, repeatedly guiding that uh, we are at the peak and, you know, it's a cyclical business. So, packaging film business, uh, let's say for SRX, RCC, there was period in FR 12, 13, when even the negative margins were there and then it suddenly shot up. So, we are at, uh, are we at the peak of the cycle or we, you know, where exactly we are? Uh, just wanted, you know, your thoughts and outlook on that. I have already mentioned that the uh, margins will remain between 50 and 60 rupees for the next, uh, for, uh, in the short to medium term period. Okay, but you don't see any uh, risk to these margins or, you know, uh... In the short to medium term, no. After, uh, in the longer term, as capacities come up, there could be a softening of some margins, but not, not immediately. So even uh, yes, globally also we don't see any great capacity additions. You know, obviously, you'll be more aware because we don't come across. So. Capacity additions are going to continue to happen in this business because globally there is a demand growth of about 6% per annum. So capacity okay. additions will have to happen to cater to increase in demand. Okay, and domestically also, like, you know, uh, most of these players have plans for capacity addition. So even when our capacity comes up, yeah, you don't see that there could be any bunching up of capacities in, you know, maybe two years down the line. Be, there could be periods, there could be a short period where capacities get bunched up. That is, that, that's definitely a possibility. But it's not happening for the next two years. 
ओके ओके अंडरस्टूड सर थैंक यू लॉर्ड दैट हेल्प थैंक यू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ यश जोशी एज एन इंडस्ट्रियल इन्वेस्टर प्लीज गो अहेड यश योर लाइन इज अनम्यूटेड प्लीज गो अहेड विद द क्वेश्चन Yes, uh, your line is unmuted for questions. If you can hear us, please unmute yourself and respond. Since there is no response on the line, ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for their closing remarks. Thank you, and over to you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us for the earnings call for Q2. FY21, and we look forward to seeing you all again uh, after the next quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Esther Industries Limited, that concludes today's call. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.